everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to another episode of Marriage and Family Matters where we discuss the matters of marriage and family because your marriage <laughs> and your family, they matter. That's right. So, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to a new series. We're going to be celebrating and kind of observing Advent. And um, I don't know if your family celebrates Advent. I know there might be calendars up in your house with candy in them or um, fun, encouraging uh, verses that are under each day. But in some way, somehow, maybe you celebrate Advent with the candles and um, lighting the candle each week. There's a great amount of um, ways that we can observe and celebrate and bring in the Advent season. Advent means the coming. So what we're observing and celebrating is the coming of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And we, um, it, it's a time of reflection. It's a time of um, you know, introspection and a time to just worship in anticipation of, you know, the Christ coming. And Advent, um, historically, Christians, some Christians have celebrated Advent in three different ways of Christ's coming. You want to share those? Sure. Three ways? The first one is as a baby in mm -hmm. the manger, mm -hmm. uh, coming in flesh. The second one is when we enter into a relationship with Christ, a personal relationship with Christ, and the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. And then the third coming is uh, actually what we, some refer to as the second coming of Christ, and that's His return as described in the book of Revelation and mm -hmm. elsewhere through Scripture. Yeah, and one is the past, the coming of Jesus over 2,000 years ago, one is the present. Currently, now, we have the coming of the Holy Spirit inside of us for those that have decided to follow Jesus and, and place our faith in Him. And one is the, the, the future, the, the hope. Um, so we're going to be applying the Advent to marriage over these three weeks. We're going to talk about forgiveness, the past, anything we need to forgive, uh, peace mm -hmm. that we receive when Christ comes into our lives, as the Holy Spirit counsels us and directs us and comforts us and and then the future hope that we have of the second coming and eternity with God. So for starters, we're going to kick off this week with um, talking a little bit about the coming of Christ as a babe in a manger. And this is a significant event, okay? <laughs> you might say that. <laughs> yeah. His coming in the flesh is especially significant for a ton of reasons, but this was a time where God's people hadn't heard God for over 400 years. He was, God was very silent. Mm -hmm. And so they found they themselves waiting, waiting mm -hmm. and waiting and waiting and waiting for the coming. And that's what Advent is all about, this anticipatory waiting uh, for the coming of Christ. And um, they, were, they were waiting for him to come and do what he had promised and said that he would do in his word, which was to come and save his people. That's right. It was a rough time back then. Yeah. Uh, you know, Roman rule, the iron, iron fist. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most when you're ruled back then, they turn you into slaves and there was abject poverty, starvation. Uh, you know, women were overtaxing. Yeah, women yeah. were not even considered, you know, fully human and may have been used for payment or yeah. barter or whatever. Um, so, yeah, they were waiting because the Messiah had been prophesied to what they thought saved them from all that stuff. Yes. Okay, but for 400 years, there was nothing. Right. And then, in 400, after 400 years, just as it had been prophesied, God came down at the time and the place that had been prophesied. But God, although he's the creator of the universe, did not come down in this big, whoosh, yeah. you know, tornado or Commanding something. Commanding force. Yeah, he didn't come on, you know, as a, as, as a soldier threatening everybody. You will worship me. He came down as yes. a pretty anonymous baby born in a barn. Yeah. 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 Amazing, totally um, innocent, um, gentle, uh, humble, um, you know, no threat, mm -mm. Uh, just just something to, uh, like what Mary says, treasure yeah. in our hearts. And you know, you know if, if depending on your age and the age of your friends, you've 
probably had received birth announcements or maybe sent them yourself and boy talk about the birth announcements of birth announcements here it yeah. is a dark hillside there's shepherds just hanging out you know watching over their flocks at night making sure the wolves didn't come and then this angel appeared I, I, I don't know how incredible that must have been I don't think we can describe it it's certainly more incredible than what you see in you know the Christmas pageant you know yeah. at your local church or whatever but lit but we we get the birth announcement is preserved of us preserved for us in the in the book of Luke where it's written the angel said to them the shepherds now he said, don't be afraid, listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today, your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. And that coming of Christ as Lord is founded in God's love. And in 1 Corinthians 13, we know that God tells us that that love always forgives mm -hmm. okay so this 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 event of god coming in the flesh not only marks obviously the birth of christ but it is the birth of the ministry of reconciliation mm. you know second corinthians 5 19 says that at that moment god was reconciling the world to himself in christ not counting our sins um against us Okay, ever. So I never really thought of the birth of Christ as also the birth of the ministry of reconciliation yeah, and forgiveness. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. So 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 God is asking us to first be reconciled to him mm -hmm. so that we have the power of the Holy Spirit to to put off our selfish ways and be reconciled to one another. We don't know what you're going through in your marriage, but we know that you have past hurts, past offenses past experiences and pain that maybe you're holding on to you know there's this there's this desire to not want to forgive and we just we implore yeah. you and we we urge you to first be reconciled to God mm -hmm. okay um because this undeserved gift is meant to move us to forgive others so Paul says in verse Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 to 32 right Paul says do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption you must put away all bitterness anger wrath quarreling and slanderous talk indeed all malice yeah. that's what you put off he goes on what we put on instead of that instead be kind to one another yeah, kind compassionate forgiving one another and here's the kicker just as in God, just as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah. So we ask you today, make a decision to be reconciled to God first mm -hmm. and be given that ability to forgive and seek forgiveness for and, any offenses. And be forgiven by God first and foremost. Yeah, that be may given, be your first step. Yeah. yeah. Be, be forgiven by God. Go to him in confession. Confess your sins to him. Be reconciled to him through his son, Jesus Christ, and you'll be given the Holy Spirit and the mm -hmm. power to be able to forgive others and seek forgiveness and, and if that that's, you need. And if that's something new to you and you're not sure exactly what that means or what's that, what that looks like, please reach out to us or uh, connect, you know, call the church or uh, info at fcfchurch.com and, and they can put you in some touch with somebody that can really help you through those first steps. Yeah. Um, the second step though, we're marriage and family, right? So after we're reconciled with God, uh, the next relationship to reconcile is that with our spouse. With our spouse. So if um, you need help with that, please don't hesitate to contact us also through the, the website or you can just um, email us at mentoring at fcfchurch.com. So in the comments, put down in the bottom, what is the greatest undeserved gift that you've ever received from anybody, your spouse, and salvation family is member? Not, it, it, salvation is the answer, but don't put that. That's yeah, not. yeah, from <laughs> someone on this earthly level. Yes. All right, have All right. a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.